Welcome to Why in the Morning. If it's Tuesday, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday at Y254 channel. So you can find us across all our social media handles at Michelle Ashira. So you can find me across all my social in this particular session. We dive into a discussion that uh, we're actually going to be taking care of your time. We care that much, right? <laughs> so we'll be uh, talking about. Uh, matters pertaining watches and uh, the business aspect of it. I know you have smartphones and you're wondering, do I need a watch really? But my dear, there's a whole business aspect of it when, when it comes to watches and they are still popular. And in studio, I am joined by the owner of Mac and T Enterprise, Mark McKenzie. Thank you, for, thank you very much for creating time to be with us. Thank you very much for having me. Uh -huh. um, yes, my name is Mackenzie Muticia. Mm -hmm. I'm the owner of Mark and T Enterprises. We sell watches online. We've been in there for four years so far. Mm -hmm. And I can say so far, so good. I mean, there are, so, there are smartphones mm -hmm. and guys, guys are asking, I'm pretty sure guys are asking at home, why should I need a watch? Why should I wear a watch? Yes. And, and why should I wear a watch? And it's... Okay, my personally, I, I see it as a fashion statement. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you walk in and, and you have a nice watch. Oh, very true. Okay, I have a nice suit. Mm -hmm. I have a nice watch. So when, when you walk in, you walk in with some presence. Oh, yeah. The same way um, people, people walk around with iPhones, but they never tend to stay in, in their pockets. They're always in their hands. So that it acts as a symbol, uh, a symbol of uh, status so that people notice you when you walk in. And us, as the watch retailers, try and give the guys um, who prefer smartphones the value proposition to why they need to wear a watch. All right, it goes back to a personal decision on a personal level. Yeah. And it, as, it, as you just said, people will have different uh, tastes in everything. I mean, want to have this particular watch someone wants a particular watch someone doesn't want a watch we still be thinking about smartphones but again it goes back it's a statement again fashion statement right so uh mark for you you started uh, you fell in love with watches from way back yes. in high school so at what particular point did you decide you know i'm actually gonna do this i'm actually gonna start a business out of something that i love um i can see it's out of the group of friends that i had then in campus, um, rather like a small tight, I can call it family, of uh, 11 guys. So um, when we got into university, we realized that um, we can't stop, we, we need to stop depending on our parents for money. So we decided, um, how, how will we make money? So we all decided to start small, small businesses. And we just started. There wasn't any business plan. It was, I like doing this, let me start. And then we realized we needed a business plan when we started. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that's how it's been four years down the line, just because we started. Okay. And when, when we look at this particular space of watches, I believe in every sort of business, when it comes to product, even services, you have to be very much acquainted to what you do, the knowledge aspect of it, being, keeping tabs on the industry, in this particular uh, situation, the watch industry. So uh, what point, at what point were you like very much comfortable and confident that I have enough knowledge on different types of uh, watches that actually are there in the market space, the industry, that if a client approaches me that I can actually give a uh, good recommendation? Um, one, I can say that there's never enough information uh, in any industry or any business that you do you are always learning every single day every single day when it comes to watches the first thing that draws a customer or a client is the, the appearance and us being online then we take a lot of time in our in the types of photos we take the lighting mm -hmm. the even the phone or camera that we use so that we can best show the product to the client because we're online um, um, when it comes to now, now dealing with the, with the customer, of course, we need information. Are you looking for a lady's watch? Are you looking for a men's watch? What's your budget? Because as McEntee, our value proposition is maximum quality for pocket-friendly prices. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and uh, uh, what was your first, uh, you know, watch brand that you wore? First brand watch <laughs> I wore. Ah, it's, I still have it at home. Mm -hmm. um, it was a uh, Bevel mm -hmm. It was it was a black chronometer, automatic mm -hmm. with a skeleton face on it. Uh, I, I got it as a gift just for starting. Okay. My my mom my mother was like, okay, I see you're trying to be independent. Okay, take. Mm -hmm. Let's see uh, how long you're going to stay with it. And till today, I still have it. All right. So how, where do you get your deals? Where do you outsource when it comes to, your, uh, to getting the good quality of, of watches? Um, I can see generally for online businesses, your biggest um, asset, yes, is in the sourcing. But it's also in how you source. Okay. So you have to broker a lot. You need to create uh, a network of suppliers to you and clients to sell to. So um, when I first started, when I first started, I had a small budget, think of 3,000. I went, went downtown, got a few pieces, went home, took photos, okay. and, and, and I started. Um, when it comes now to sourcing, it's a, it's, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. Uh, a supplier will give you good stock today, um, and because it's a, it's a chain, the supplier here gets from another supplier abroad. The supplier abroad gets it from now the factory. So if the factory decides we're going to make watches this way, then the whole chain is affected. All right. And speaking about quality and outsourcing, uh, does the company be, is it in a position whereby if a client approaches you and they want a particular watch, probably Rolex or Daytona, so are you guys in a position to actually get what the client wants and actually the original? Yes. Yes. The original watch. Oh, but if if the price <laughs> is right, if the price is right, we shall do it for you. Uh -huh. um, um, my my approach to business is never no. Uh -huh. It is never no. We can't do it. We can do it. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it is for us as the service provider or the uh, loosely, loosely used consultant for us to join the dots to get the desired effect. Be because when it comes to online businesses, people tend to focus on the product or the service, but it's largely on the delivery to the customer. Mm -hmm. We always say the customer is king. And online, um, one bad review can, can, can close your business. So um, when you're in the online space, clients and their service to them is very, very important. Very, very important. All right. Allow me to take you back when you mentioned about your value proposition. And let's look at what gap did you see in, the, in our local watch industry that you saw that you can actually come in and uh, solve a particular problem? Okay. Um, when or I start, stand out? When I started, I, was, I, I can say I'm still very ambitious. Okay. I like people to wear watches. So if you don't have a watch, then that's an opportunity for me to sell my my belief that you should be wearing a watch. If I may ask, are you wearing a watch? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, guys, we have a customer. <laughs> okay, 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 so I'll come get a watch. So we recommend a couple of them, lady, I will. I lady will. designed watches. Um, no. I, um, probably if you could, you didn't come with a sample though. Ah, uh, no, no. We'll oh, check out on social media, media, guys, yeah. wait, we will, t at this point, I think this is the right moment to take us to your social media so that guys can actually uh, go through go through it and as we have this conversation. Okay, um, you can log into your Instagram app and search MC underscore N underscore T. MC underscore N underscore T. Mark and T Enterprises. Yeah, because it was quite hard for me also to find the, the accounts. Oh, I, yes, I think I went yes. for I went for the Mac and T, the whole oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the whole name of it. Anyway, so what what type of skills does one require when it comes to if I'm interested, I love watches and I want to get into this uh, sort of kind of a business. So what am I? What 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 do I need to do? Um, what are the mm. requirements? The good thing about online businesses is um, there are no hard and fast rules mm -hmm. to it. It's passion. I can see. The first thing you need is passion. 
with, then you can't pull it with confidence because if you're passionate about something, you can easily walk up to someone and say, this is what I'm doing and this is what I'd like you to do for me. Um, of course, that doesn't take away doing your, your due diligence or market research because you need to see the gap um, in, the, in the market. Um, a bit of accounting is important. Bookkeeping is very, very important. Because, yes, I can sell a watch, get my 5,000. I got it for two or even 3K. But now the profit, that's where, that's where the success or the failure of a business matters a lot. Um, I, I recently um, enrolled to one of my friends um, she's, an, she's an online entrepreneur, online marketing influencer, stroke entrepreneur. Um, in one of our discussions, she was saying that specifically for the Kenyan market, um, your, your margins should be about 30 to 40 percent for you to survive just a year in business. And it's a good range for you to, for you to save um, get more capital and build your business. All right. Let's speak about grooming. Yeah? Is there any form of uh, color coordination when it comes to putting on uh, the right watch as a gentleman? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's a very <laughs> wide question. Oh, yeah. I know, right? Okay. Uh, but s simply put, um, mm -hmm. always try much color, your, co yeah. color coordination, probably. Yes. Let me specify. Yeah, um, the easy to go to rule, mm -hmm. match your watch, your belt, and your shoes. Perfect. I think that's the simplest rule. Yeah. Just, just keep it that way. And for the gentlemen who didn't know that, now that we are safe, we are good. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> match your, match your belt, mm -hmm. your watch, and your shoes. It's it's it is easier. But if you're very daring, you can go with the subtle elements of y your watch to now your your belt or your shoes. Okay, I think that's way easier, way, way easier. So you have a background in law, right? Yes. So how has that, has that been in, uh, has that been in, uh, of any benefit when it comes to your business? When I started, to be very honest, when I started, mm -hmm. I was like, yes, I'm going to get this degree, I'm going to apply it, and everything will just seamlessly think fit. It, yeah. Well, it hasn't been that way, and I think that, that, that's the beauty about business. Uh, we start thinking it's going to go this way and it, then it's a whole beautiful journey. But so far, um, um, it's in the small, small aspects of it um, in, understanding, in understanding what uh, customer protection is. Um, understanding that if I tell you or if I show you a certain watch looks like this, then I, it is a burden on me to provide what I have shown you. If not, then I am exposed as a business to liability. So um, as, a, as a consumer or as a consumer of market tea, if I were to sell you a watch that didn't fit the description of, of what you saw, then you as a consumer has a right to reject, reject the, the watch or demand that you be delivered with the watch that you have requested for. All right. And for someone who's watching this conversation and they're wondering when it comes to outsourcing your products and uh, you're at the negotiation table, what are your couple tips, couple of your tips when you, when you go around just negotiating uh, with the watch dealers? Um, top three. Top three. Yes. Smile. <laughs> okay. Smile. Mm -hmm. um, always put your best foot forward. Come and buy in bulk. Always come and buy in bulk. When you're dealing with a new supplier, always come and buy in bulk because that shows faith and trust. And three, just be honest. Just be honest with them. I think honesty has gotten us so far, from, especially on, on the supplier's end, because um, as much as people say debt is not good for business, I, I believe debt is good. All right. Okay, there's the there's the healthy debt okay. and the and the and the toxic one where you just you, you you borrow and you don't know how you're going to get it back. So, 
Um, when it comes to suppliers, because I personally, um, I've got into arrangements with some of my suppliers where I can, I can pick and pay later. It's a pick and pay later type of agreement, which, which provides us with cash flows to enable us to grow. Well, and what uh, uh, are the costs involved in opening uh, a watch business? Um, looking back at it, yes. uh, four years ago, mm -hmm. I, I thought I actually needed a lot of money. And you didn't? Uh, not really. Okay. Okay, it, it was, there were four zeros. Oh. There were four zeros in, in involved. Okay. Um, I can see, um, yes, it's a capital intensive business because you need to buy the watches for you to take photos of and then put them on social media. Any other ongoing expenses? Um, now that depends with your, with your business model. Okay. It really depends on the business model. Um, because we're dealing in products, then there's the logistics aspect of it, which can easily be outsourced. Okay. Um, okay, just to put you into, into the inner, inner chambers or the inner workings mm -hmm. of McEntee is, um, what we, what we do uh, specifically or what we've concentrated on is in the supplying and the marketing. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to lo logistics, logistics, packaging, it's all outsourced. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if I may, um, we've outsourced to another business. It's called Drop and Pick because okay. they offer logistics and packaging solutions to us. So we find it very easy. Mm -hmm. So what is your price range for your watches and what type of watches usually, I'm so sure the, the particular brand uh, or type of a watch that is always on high demand? Um, it's, it's seasonal. Okay. Let me just say it has been very se se seasonal for us. Um, when we started, we uh, started with Daniel Wellingtons, which really sold, which really, really, really sold. And then we moved now to um, Patex, which really, really sold, really, really sold. Then we moved to Hublot, which really, really sold. Um, but now, but now what the direction that we're taking to is more the automatic watches. The auto, and an automatic watch is one that does not need a battery. Mm -hmm. So by, by your mechanical movement, then there's a rotor that collects your kinetic energy. And then that's used to power your watch. Mm -hmm. So you just wake up, wear, and move. Mm. Very convenient. Yeah, very. <laughs> as, as easy as a phone. Uh, yes, and now because I don't have a watch, I, I, I will go with that one. I think I've already found me a watch, the, the type that I would like. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm saving on expenses also. No batteries. Yeah, no batteries. <laughs> so how can one increase the profit margins when it comes to this space of kind of business? Um, it is... It is... I don't say pricing, but it's more in value, value and what people, what people, um, uh, I'm looking for the word, uh, it's not inspire, mm -hmm. but what the qualities people attribute your business to. Um, people say, um, keep your margins low, keep your prices low, but it, I, I feel and I think that the, the key is in the value or the experience you provide to your customer. Because if I sell your watch for, let's say, 10K, um, and you want it in the next two hours, then if I brought it under an hour with a very exquisite box with the packaging and perhaps a note, just thanking you for supporting us and a branding, one, um, I've, I, have, I have hit you, the timeline you've given me, I've halved it. Okay. Um, the packaging is good. Mm -hmm. um, the customer service that you've received since from the point of the, your request to delivery has been seamless. There's been good communication from start to end. You will not feel the pinch of giving me your 10,000. Yes, and actually referrals. Yeah. Mm, and I'll probably come back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you take me through your when it comes to financial aspect of it. What is the financial strategy that ensures that the business stays afloat? One is savings. Mm -hmm. Number one is saving. Sell, save. Whatever you have left, now, now you are portion. 
and for you to be able to save and still uh, keep enough to keep your business afloat, then of course you need targets. Mm -hmm. You need ta weekly targets. You need um, your monthly targets. You need your yearly targets. So it still boils down to now your goals, goes down to goal setting, what you want to do for the year. Like this year, um, we are planning to open now an independent physical store. So that was a certain amount of money. So for me to achieve that certain amount of money, I need to sell this amount of watches in a month. And out of the watches that I sell, this is the revenue I expect to create. So in as much as our watches have different pricing pricings, um, the collective kitty require we have a goal for it. Okay. And uh, apart from uh, which is actually we we commend you guys we are happy for you that you're actually getting a physical shop but apart from that what are a couple of measures that you guys are taking up to scale up the business uh in this particular year um okay i'm, I'm sorry can i just take it back just a bit uh, of okay. course um, um it's an independent physical shop we, we have a physical store um okay. in town all right yes um where is it located it's at um what's the name okay i'm forgetting the it's name okay of it shop. happens it happens all um time. Sonalux All right. building on my avenue opposite Optica. Okay. We're on the seventh floor, shop number 6B. All right. Yes. Okay, so what are the other measures that you guys are taking up to just scale up the business uh, this, this year? Of course, of course, we're always negotiating for better prices, okay. both from um, our suppliers and the, the businesses that support us. Because um, in as much as we are selling, we're always trying to reduce expenses. And, and by reducing our expenses, then we are able to, to gain more per sale mm -hmm. in, in terms of profit. Okay, because yeah. also there's the, the aspect of thinking about the client also. Yes. Okay, a couple of challenges that you're facing. Supply chains. Mm -hmm. because, of, because of corona, um, the lead time between restocks has, has gotten a bit larger. Um, okay, granted, everyone shut down because of, cause of COVID. Uh, well, I can say that has been a blessing in disguise because it, it showed us a, a weakness in, in our business. Which is? Um, we, we had gotten a cost accustomed to, to a certain lead time and we um, foreseen the impact of COVID on us and now we stock more than we used to just in case. Now, we, you, now you guys are prepared. Oh yeah, we, we <laughs> used to deal on a just in time uh -huh. business model. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, and what is the future looking like when, it to, when you talk about the Mark and T enterprise? Uh, um, it's 2021. Um, we, we woke up we woke up from 2020, which was a very, you can see, a bit dull. Mm -hmm. It was a dull year. Um, we we'd like to venture out of out of the watch space a bit, so that we can we can focus on other other businesses. Um, I'm, I'm I'm trying to set up a multi-level marketing business as we speak, and I am looking to use those customers in increasing our sales okay. of watches. All right, all right, all right. So, and uh, how can guys find you across all social media handles if they want to be part of the, uh, the team that will, <laughs> that will be the distributors at the Mac and T? Uh, and uh, yeah, give us the social media handles. Um, the most interesting thing about me is that um, I am not on Instagram other than my business. Okay. So if you if you want to find me on Instagram, you will just have to go to the same page, yeah. MC underscore N underscore T. Um, if you want to find me on Twitter, um, my my handle is MCK at Muticia. No, MCK Muticia. All right. Thank you very much, Mark, for creating time to be with us and talking about all matters pertaining watch. Seems like you cared so much to take care of our time. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I I was watching your time.
give me a watch though. Okay. Okay. Will, thank will, you. Thank you for creating time to be with us. Thank you very much. All right. So that is Mark Mackenzie Muticia, who is uh, the founder of Mark and T Enterprises, talking about all matters pertaining the watch uh, watch business industry. At Y254 Channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles. At uh, Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my socials. So make sure you don't tap that down. We'll be right back.